Yeah, no problem, Dave. Um, just, just, just broadly on the squad, what were the major considerations you had to think about um, regarding this squad? Obviously, a massive logistical issue as well, getting in and out. What are the major things you had to think of this week regarding selection? Um, it's stuff that we've obviously been um, thinking about for a, for a number of months, and it's really a little bit of long term thinking. Um, you know, who would benefit from a, a solid off season, and and so. Uh, that affected the makeup of a team, and um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's that's how we've come to it. Really, we've uh, we're taking a stronger team if possible away, um, but with a, an eye to the future. A skeleton, Latu, uh, Arnold, the three big names that have been a trainer rugby before. Can you just run through those three guys, those conversations, and why you brought them in for this squad? Yeah, I mean, we've been speaking to a number of guys for a long time around potentially coming home and their desire to play for the Wallabies again. Um, obviously, uh, the situation with COVID, the um, the desire to leave some guys at home to have a decent off-season and make shifts in their game um, has created an opportunity to, to utilise some of those guys. And um, although, as we know, I was really disappointed that Rory Arnold had already committed to leave um, you know Australia uh, post World Cup, and and obviously he's gained more experience over there, but still has a strong desire to play for the Wallabies. And um, so, you know, so I've been in constant contact with him, even when I was in Scotland. Um, uh, Will, I've also spoken a lot to. Um, I, I coached against him a fair bit uh, when he was at Saracens. I was at Glasgow, and. And likewise, he's obviously since then headed off to La Rochelle, and, um, but also very keen uh, to play for the Wallabies again. And and then likewise was with, um, with Tolu, um, he's obviously been playing his trade in France, and and um, so all of these guys have they've had an understanding that it could be an opportunity. Um, you know, so um, oh, look, it's great for us. It's good experience, be good for our young group, and. And fantastic to have those guys back in the mix. Dave, when will those guys join the squad? Will that be as soon as you guys land in the UK? Um, and do you think they would be eligible for selection for that Scotland game? Or is it realistic that maybe, you know, they're looking at those last two games as opposed to that first game in Scotland? Yeah, the first one's tough um, because of Reg 9. Uh, even though we, we would have been in the UK for, you know, two weeks prior to the Scottish game, uh, chances are those guys won't join us till Sunday night after they play. Um, so we're giving them a bit of work and they're doing a bit of homework um, the key thing is they need to be really well conditioned and I know they're doing additional work there uh, they've obviously got a commitment to their club and and um, so yeah, look, we'll, we'll, we'll make uh, a decision around um, uh, how they shape up when they come in um, but uh, we certainly we won't be using all three of those guys against Scotland Dave, can you just give us a bit of an insight there? Um, a lot of people wouldn't have seen Will Skelton in recent years. Um, you have, though, as you mentioned. So an insight in him, but also with Rory Arnold, um, Dan McKellar would know him very well. But when 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 he left at 2019, would you, you had considered him as a world-class second rower at that time? Um, okay, we'll start with Rory then. So I'd say yes. Um, oh, look, I, I think he was one of the biggest losses. Um and, and looking from afar, uh, obviously that was really disappointing, and it was it was too far down the track. Uh, he'd already committed to Toulouse, and um, so there was no way of backing out of that. Um, so, yeah, look, and he he's been outstanding for Toulouse. Obviously, they won Europe and the French competition last year. Uh, he's had a big hand in that. Um, likewise, uh, Will he uh, he really leaned down. Saracens did a great job with him. Um, they probably used them more in the last couple of years as a uh, guy off the bench who come on with 30 to go and um, oh, look, he was devastating. Um, La Rochelle, obviously he's played for them last year. They they were runner-up in both competitions and, um, you know, Will was regarded as best player in Europe. Uh, so that tells you the impact he's having over there. Dave, just touching on some of the guys that you sort of left at home, the likes of Noah, uh, Harry Wilson, um, have you, can you sort of give us an insight into those conversations you have with them and how they've sort of reacted to 
do sort of prioritizing their preseason in 2022 as opposed to sort of taking him to a spring tour? Yeah. Um, oh, look, oh, everyone wants to tour. Oh, what I've been impressed about, if, you, if we start with Harry, uh, Harry hasn't played test match footy in the last sort of month. Uh, and he's desperate to, to play at this level. And, um, you know, what we're saying is that staying home is going to give him an opportunity to make, make shifts um, physically uh, and in his game, which is you know, going to allow him to excel at this level. And, um, and so to his credit, he's been really mature around it. He, he wants to play. He realises coming away with us, if he doesn't get that chance to play, it's also he's still going to have to train and do all the things that help the team prepare. And this gives him a plan. Um, so, yeah, I look at uh, we we rate him highly, and um, you know, as a young man, he hasn't really had an off season. He didn't get much of one last year, and so likewise with Noah, um, you know, he, he needs to get a, put on a little bit of muscle mass and deal with the physical nature of having to defend at ten. Um, he'll he'll work on getting more explosive and acceleration, uh, try and get a bit of distance in his kicking game, and and so this is going to obviously give him time to do that. So. Uh, both both good young men who we think have got a big future in the, the gold jersey and a, a chance for them to make some shifts. Uh, hi, Dave. Can I ask you about Hooker, please? Uh, so you've got a couple of um, uh, new guys in, uh, new to your squad. Um, this time around, you've got another three or four that have been in and around the squad uh, since you've come in. So... Is it fair to say you're still sort of searching around for, you know, for who who the best hookers might be long term? <laughs> yeah, fair to say. Um, I look, uh, I rate um, Lockie Lonigan really highly. Uh, he's, he's a bit of a lightweight at the moment. He's, he's about 103, 104 kilos, um, and uh, look, we think he's got a real point of difference in his game. Uh, throws well. Um, needs to really embrace. Uh, scrummaging and uh, put on some size and some mixed strength and, um, and and so a decent off season is going to allow him to do that. Um, so so look, he's good enough to tour, but we, we still think this is best long term. Um, there's obviously been a number of hookers who have been out long term injury wise, and um, and Connell's been in our mix before. We like him. Uh, he's he's old school. A very good set piece. Uh, it's going to be important over the UK, and so a chance for him to, uh, I guess, get out in front of us again and um, and show that he's capable of playing at this level. I uh, also wanted to ask you about Lucan. So he's gone from starting Test matches uh, not too long ago. Now he's got, uh, looks like he's got five guys in front of him. So what's the message to him? And uh, do you still see him primarily as a lock, or is there an opportunity again, maybe? in a sixth role in the future? Yeah, obviously, um, I guess it's what happens, doesn't it? You know, you, you step aside and you give other guys opportunities and they grab them. Um, obviously, Luke Arm went home for the birth of his daughter and uh, being in Sydney, we couldn't get him back. Um, the other guys have played really well. That's, that's for a start and performed, you know, well against Argentina and, and South Africa and, um, we're obviously going to utilise a bit of experience from overseas. Um, you know, we've talked to lots of Lucan around uh, the impact he has with and without the ball. Um, you know, his body height and tackle clean carry, um, and his ability to create go forward. And and um, so this is going to be an opportunity for him to make some real shifts uh, in regard to that. We we need him uh, certainly more powerful from a league point of view and. And, um, you know, a decent off-season to allow him to do that. He, he hasn't had one of those recently. So uh, he's not out of the picture. Uh, but, you know, we think this is a great opportunity for him. And it'd be great to see how re he responds. Dave, what's the situation with Samu Karebi, his injury? When do you expect him to be back? Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, so a chance to be uh, available for the Japanese game, certainly, certainly um, post that, definitely available. Okay, and I know there was some consideration to leave Hunter at home, um, but obviously you've gone with a bit of extra cover there in Parisi and uh, Lalakai Fichetti as well. Can you just talk around that thinking in your, your centres there? Yeah, we've um, obviously a question mark around um, 
you know, when Samu's back, um, genuine clarity. We're not sure if he'd be available for the Japanese game. Uh, technically falls out of Reg 9 as well. Uh, so we're we're uh, talking with Suntory around that. Um, yeah, we've got, obviously, Lalakai um, injured a finger and um, left us from Perth. So he's been away, hasn't played much footy since that time. And uh, and then likewise with Izzy Parisi, uh, had a shoulder reconstruction and, and uh, you know, he's been back in the contact for the last couple of weeks and he's ticked every box, but again, hasn't played a lot of footy. So uh, we've got a lot of work to get into Izzy and whether he'll be ready in 10 days to play test footy, that's a question mark. So, um, you know, and Hunter's a very good player. Um, uh, I guess like Lucan, a couple of other guys have really grabbed their opportunities and, and uh, you know, he gets a chance to remind us what he's capable of. Does that mean that the Japanese base guys in Quaid and Sean are also in that boat for the October 23 game against Japan? That You might not have them and you've got to be talking with the Japanese clubs about that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, key thing around this is we're trying to trying to create a strong relationship uh, with the Japanese clubs too, because while from a Reg Nine point of view we can grab them, um, you know they're uh, their primary employer at the moment, and uh, and while they've been very supportive, they've also got their own programs to to focus on, and you know they want to be successful as well, and uh, I, I guess they want their um, their best players fit and available, so. Uh, it's important that we we establish a good relationship there. Dave, Dave can I just ask about the, uh, to, uh, sorry, Muzz. Um You mentioned sorry, Dave. You you mentioned in relation to uh, Rory and Will um, and the like, and, and you know you've mentioned about a couple other guys that you've been talking in regular contact about coming home. Are, are those guys? open to it do you feel like you're getting somewhere or them being selected in this squad and also extend that to the japanese based guys is that sort of making them think well i can stay overseas and and still play for australia yeah I'll look obviously um for want of a better word the ghetto law um you know it's it's um there's nothing based in concrete at the stage uh preference still is to pick uh, from here i'd uh, my mindset hasn't changed around that. I think it's important that we're promoting from within. Uh, I think some of these guys coming in and getting a taste of the environment and the culture, um, you know, hopefully that that encourages them to come back and play here. And uh, so some of them have got existing contracts that will take them through to um, uh, all of next year and, and some of them right through to the World Cup. But, um, you know, I, I guess we're trying to bring as many home as we can a, to, to add to uh, the quality of our super teams to help um, from an experience point of view with, with all the young men coming through and which will eventually benefit us. Yeah, sorry, Akko. Dave, I was actually going to ask about that. What, what is the actual like, official Gitto law at the moment now? Because I know there was a cap. Where are we? Is it just fluid at the moment or is there a bigger cap? Can all those guys play at once? So what's, what's actually being... Rearrange yeah, so that. I guess there's been there's been exceptions based on COVID. Um, so historically, there's been you know the seventy uh, so the sixty plus rule. Um, yeah, we talked about bringing being able to bring a couple of guys in, and that was our plan to, to go with that. Um, once once COVID restrictions come in, we couldn't get any players out of New South Wales. Couldn't get them out of Victoria. Um, we had a couple other players home, and so we got an exemption to utilise some of those guys who uh, were actually here uh, in between seasons. So uh, that's not necessarily the plan going forward. Um, and there'll be discussions we'll have uh, post-spring tour. And, and Dave, there's been a little bit of discussion around Kirtley Bill, particularly in light of Tom Banks' injury, which has ruled him out. Um, was he in the reckoning, in the consideration, um, if there is another injury to fullback, might he uh, also come into the reckoning at some point in the spring tour? Oh, look, we're constantly talking about players who are overseas and Luke Monaghan's another guy who comes in. So, um, you know, uh, we, we've certainly spoken about everyone who's over there. Um, obviously, we're still trying to promote from within. Uh, we think Hodgie Hodgie can do a job for us there. We've got 
Andrew Callaway, who's played, um, you know, uh, a little bit of 15, certainly trained a lot of 15 for us. Um, yeah, we'd like to see Geordie play a lot of 15 at super level before considering him at test level. And uh, the plan is, uh, from a barbarian's point of view, Geordie will stay and play 15 in that game. And Dave, you've spoken a lot about character within the group. You spoke about bringing Quay back into the group. Um, Tolu Latu, um, a couple of years ago, was done for drink driving in Australia. He had a situation home in France where he was done again. I don't know how much contact you've had with Tolu. He's had a few off-field issues there. Was that considered in your selection? Yeah, I mean, with all these guys, you know, we spend a lot of time um, having a conversation. Now, Tolu's a little bit different. His is via WhatsApp and Zoom. Um, the other guys like Quaid and that, we've had a chance to sit down and have a coffee and and have a decent chat around expectations and where things are at. And invariably, you know, we've got some guys who, as younger men, made some poor decisions. Um, and, you know, they've, they've made shifts around that. And, and uh, look, I'm, I'm going to judge guys on, on how they behave within our environment as opposed to, um, you know, what other people are telling me about them. And so... You know, with, with James coming back in, with, with Quaid coming back in, uh, they've been outstanding, uh, made massive contributions to the group, and uh, we ex expect the same from Tolly. Um, you're the boss of the Barbarians. You'll coach that week. How is there a breakdown in communication with Quaid? Is he playing? Is he not? Um, what, what's the story <laughs> there? Um, oh, look, uh, Steve Steve jumped the gun around announcing that. So, yeah, we'd, we'd spoken to Quaid, but, um, you know, he's got a club to go back to too. Um, we're obviously keen for him to tour um, and staying another week obviously um, makes that a little bit more difficult. So um, I see he was certainly interested, but he hadn't committed. So, um, yeah, no, all good. No, no damage done. Dave, uh, Michael's played uh, all of the tests. He's, he's got the chance to have a little break now. Uh, do you see him going right through again uh, uh, with all of the remaining matches? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And can I ask you one more about, um, I know you don't like to give away test jerseys, but are we likely to see uh, Pone get a run at any stage? Um, I mean, ideally, he would have got a run last test against Argentina. Uh, like he's had a few issues around hammies and calves. Um, so, he, he, you know, we, uh, we could have thrown him out there in that game, but it would have been a bit of a risk, a high risk. And so we decided to... I guess wrap him up in cotton wool for an extra week. So um, I look at, like you say, he's got to earn his strikes. We're taking three tight heads away. Uh, James Slipper can play tight head as well, and he'd cope at test level. So we've got options there. Um, you know, he'd say he's got to earn the right to play, but um, he is uh, he's a big man and very explosive and uh, has a point of difference. And Dave, um, looking ahead, England, um, it's been a while. Well, I'm sure you've licking your lips to get um, a crack at them. But there's a three-match series against them next year as well. Um, is that the one that you're really exciting, uh, excited for? And is there anything you can give us, any lines? Uh, we know Eddie Jones is the master of those ones. Like You can't look too far in front, but what have you got to give us? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, oh, look, you're right, it's, it's three games away. Our focus on Japan at the moment. Um, we've had a... A few day, down days where we can get a bit of study done. So we're looking at, um, I guess, all four opponents from a coaching perspective. But uh, the focus will be on Japan. They're a good side, very well coached. They, they've got a high skill set, their ability to generate really quick ball, just uh, technically excellent. Um, so it's going to be a massive challenge. And I know, um, yeah, Jamie, they, they've been preparing a long time for this game. So uh, that's got to be our focus. And look, it's exciting. We've We've had 10 tests so far, um, all, all really tough opponents. We've got four more uh, really high-quality games and, and high-quality opponents. So that, that's great for us. Um, yeah, we always looked at this year as uh, massive for our development and our learning. And, um, you know, so we've learned a lot and we've got a lot more in us. So, um, you know, we'll hopefully we'll be a bit further down the track uh, in our development when we play England. Um, you know, twicking them in a few weeks, and um, you know we're, we're going to have to be very good, a uh, very good side. David, did you have a chance to chat to Louis Liner before he um, 
join that England squad? Was he in your thoughts at all? I, I haven't spoken to him. I think Jono, Jono certainly spoken to Michael. So, um, yeah, I look, obviously Eddie's well aware of his, his lineage and and catching him quickly. Um, but yeah, look, he's, um, yeah, although we'll, we'll see how things go there, whether they use him or not um, over the next period. Um, um, you know, whether there's any interest for him to come back to Australia. So he's not England's yet then, as far as you're concerned? Not, not till he's, not till he's kept. Yeah, nice. And, and Dave, you know, um, believe Scott Johnson's going to be joining on the tour. Um, what's the, like, what are the real benefits of having Scott over there? Um, obviously he's a third selector, so that, that will continue, but, but what else um, does Scott offer when you, when you're going overseas for a trip like this? He knows the UK like you very well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, he's um, he's he's really good to have in the group. So he he attends all trainings. He watches all footage uh, when we're discussing players and training and what's going on. He's got a very good eye, John. Obviously, he's done a lot of coaching. Uh, and he's um, he's a bit of a um, devil's advocate type man, where uh, we may be thinking along a, a certain line, and he'll challenge that thinking. And uh, so it's, we have really good discussion. So. Um, yeah, I think his contribution to the group's excellent. Um, and at the same time, he doesn't overdo it. You know, he's not trying to tell us how to coach and how to play. Um, so, yeah, look, his, his experience around that's invaluable and I uh, really appreciate it. Dave, have you worked out when you're going to go back to Scotland? I know when you get to the UK, there's some talk of going away for a week and going to Brighton for a training week. Do you have any, any idea when you sort of make your way up to Edinburgh for that? <laughs> It seems crazy, doesn't it? That um, you know these these sort of tours are normally done twelve months out, and everything's in concrete, and uh, and we're still tidying up things based on uh, facilities and and what's going to work best. Um, ideally, we would have gone straight to Scotland, but uh, we couldn't be there prior to seven days before the test based on some COVID uh, regulations. So yeah, we're going to start in Brighton, and and the plan is to head to Scotland a week out. Um, but yeah, there's still still a handful of little things to sort out there. There's, there's different protocols and requirements in the different um, areas. So um, but again, we've got to we've got to make sure that um, you know we're not we're not going into an environment where we're going to be in a tight bubble for the next six weeks because uh, you know that'll be really tough. We um, yeah, we want to make sure that we can still have a little bit of freedom, but but within within uh, you know, limits. So. Um, whether that means if we're eating out that we're booking out a restaurant um, as opposed to being stuck in a hotel and only allowed out for training. So um, a few things to sort through. Dave, Dave. Um, Fraser McRae is not in the, in the group. How do you ensure that this guy is not the next, the next Lamb Gill and will be lost to Australian rugby because, well, there's competition in front of him and you will have the impression that well, I'm never going to get a real chance in Australia until uh, Hooper is there and there's more money to be made overseas. Yeah. Oh, look, um, A, he's contracted. Uh, B, um, like, Fraser's trained really well. Uh, we're constantly giving him feedback. Uh, he's got clarity on the shifts that he needs to make in his game as well. And, uh, look, if, if, he, if he can accelerate his game over the next period like he has in the last 12 months... Um, yeah, he's going to put a lot of pressure on hoops. Um, yeah, like, I, like there's no guarantees for anyone. We, we've talked about we're not going to give away test caps. Uh, the fact that hoops is a specialist seven and so is Fraser gives us um, a lack of versatility if they're both in the same squad. And we've done it a couple of times. Um, but having someone who can come off the bench or someone within that group who can cover all three positions, um, you know, is vital for us. Dave, you spoke about a, a lot about Rory uh, and Will and them coming back and their influence potentially on their squad. But just as a coach broadly, what's it like to make that phone call and how excited are they just to be back in gold potentially? Oh, look, they're absolutely wrapped. Um, you know, I guess in Will's case, he might have thought that his chance of playing international footy is gone. Um, so, yeah, oh, look, when, when we first approached them and said, oh, look, if there's a chance... To join us on the European tour, would you be interested? And um, you know, certainly all of them were really positive. 
um, you know, and would jump at the opportunity. So, uh, so that's been great. They've obviously been talking to guys back here. They've they've got an understanding of of what we're about and what we're trying to do, and uh, they're keen to be part of that. Is is Will a line out option these days? It was one of the criticisms when he was last in Australia. He was too big to be an option. Yeah, no, he's definitely a line out option. Obviously, he's a big man and and a very good lifter as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, you pick him as a lock 